As a professional caregiver, would you be able to identify elder abuse if you witness the act being committed by a family member or coworker? Would you recognize and be able to identify a specific act by one of your coworkers committing elder abuse? If you saw a coworker commit elder abuse, would you make a report to the appropriate authorities? Is there any action that you take as a professional caregiver that might be perceived by others as elder abuse? Elder abuse is highly unreported in professional and home care settings. Here are the main categories of elder abuse. Sexual, physical, emotional and financial abuse, neglect, abandonment, and self-neglect. Neglect is the broadest category as defined by Clark and Pearson. Neglect is the refusal or failure of a caregiver to provide for needs of food, clothing, medication, shelter, supervision, medical care, and other support that a person would believe essential for the well-being of another person. While you may believe you haven't witnessed elder abuse, I suspect you have. Let me give you a few examples of elder abuse that commonly occur in residential care settings, meaning assisted living communities and personal care homes by care staff. My guess is that you've participated in or seen someone else do one or more of these actions. The first type of elder abuse is the use of consequences and punishment. A caregiver told one of my clients, if you don't do X, Pamela will do Y. Is this a threat? Yes. Does the statement suggest a consequence of not performing an action? Yes. This action by the caregiver is elder abuse. Second example. A caregiver calls me and says, Mary is upset because you are doing ABC. This sounds like a caregiver relaying information on behalf of my client to me. Yes. But is the caregiver relaying the caregiver's perception of Mary being upset or really Mary's opinion? It's impossible to know. Giving an opinion as if it were my client's opinion falls under the elder abuse category of caregiver privilege. One more example. A receptionist at a large assisted living community refuses to put calls through to residents unless she personally recognizes the voice of the person calling. Does this action support or deny friend or family contact? Yes. Does this action deny a resident's right to speak to family? Yes. The resident's action, the receptionist's action, falls under the elder abuse category of caregiver privilege and isolation. These innocent actions and others are actions that caregivers in residential care communities believe to be acceptable in situations where clients have memory loss or high care needs, the incidence of unintentional elder abuse are even greater. Whether you are a supervisor or an employee, ask about training so you understand the components of elder abuse. Elder abuse is a topic rarely addressed because professional caregivers believe that their actions would never fall into this category. You would be surprised. If you are a professional caregiver, Ongoing and continuous education benefits you and the persons for whom you care. I'm Pamela Wilson of The Caring Generation, an online community of support for professional and family caregivers.